In last year's draft, many had the first round passing completely quarterback free. But with the scarcity and importance of the position, this was unlikely to hold true, no matter the talent pool. Selected 23rd overall, Kenny Pickett managed to stay local, being selected by the Pittsburgh Steelers, a team that was desperate for a refresher at the quarterback position. Given very little time to adapt, Pickett saw himself thrust into the lineup after Mitch Trubisky continued to show a phobia for throwing past the sticks, and his debut was as erratic as they come with his first throw in the NFL being this horrendous duck sling into double coverage, off in both read and placement. Yet, there were glimpses, signs of sheer brilliance in escapability and escapades, but a lack of definitive rhythm and dimes that leave you questioning whether this guy is truly a franchise quarterback. A skill that definitely passed me by, like the balls whistling past these linebackers, is the velocity with which Pickett can generate. The narrowest of window frames are never too small for him to target. With the Saints up showing the blitz, the immediate coverage isn't clear, but Pickett will successfully scan the D to spot man, and with a good second progression, rifles this past two defenders to Pickens on the slant. These outside balls to hitches and comebacks are going to be routine hitters for him, able to punish teams for playing off on the boundary and driving the ball beyond the sticks, unlike the rest of the QB room. With the Eagles playing so far off, the Steelers have an out for Claypool that Pickett can easily exploit, and he's winding up with Claypool in the cut, rocketing this to the boundary for the easy eight yards. And here, going the wide side of the field, the route is a beauty from Deontay Johnson, and the ball matches it in rhythm, hitting him right out the break to move the chains. This time, the difficulty is up another notch, throwing this to the wide side, under pressure, and to much further sticks, throwing this before Pickens has even made his cut, allowing him to cut back into the ball, catching it uncontested for the chain mover. And that zip means he should be able to stretch the field vertically, although more on the ability to control that later in the video. It's not all just tight window slicing and boundary balls. There's the hopeful glimpses of progression and read work, However, this is by no means an overall strength, and I'll have plenty to complain about later. On third down, the Falcons are showing a single high look pre-snap, with five men up threatening to rush. This is only a bluff though, rolling into cover three. With just three yards needed for the first, Pickett first looks to Deontay Johnson on the boundary, knowing his arm strength can squeeze it even if the coverage is tight. But AJ Terrell has this smothered, and Pickett will have to work to find a receiver. Scanning his eyes quickly to the far side, he sees 26 with his back to him, sprinting out to cover a flat, and knows his tight end will stay open on the route, rifling this to Fryermuth as a D-line gives him a twirl. And here's more quick identifying and correct scanning to target. The Ravens have an ambiguous too high look here, but spotting Patrick Queen following the tight end getting in behind him, he correctly identifies cover two man, immediately working to the backside post, the read for cover two man on this play, and rifles the ball past a trailing Kyle Hamilton, putting this high and up for his tight end. Then, against the Jets, the five-man front is again shown, but this time, it's coming with New York playing cover one on the back end. The poor Steelers line does nothing to stop the interior pressure, but he somehow identifies fast, reads Muth's leverage on his man, and fires a dart while getting lit up. That's great eyes and great bravery. More courage on display here against the Colts, as Kenny will have to navigate pressure and extend to allow this route to develop past the long sticks. They've got a slot fade option, if they get a good matchup, which clears space for a levels concept created by a quick drag option and a deep dig route to hit the middle of the field. The fade is out leveraged with the safety, and the drag is double guarded, so the only option to get the first is that deep dig. The protection holds well for once, and this gives Kenny room to slide and buy time for the route to come open, standing tall amongst a free rusher to deliver a dime while getting popped. And here's more extension, again on a crucial third down to keep the drive alive. The Raiders peel out of the loaded box look into a Tampa 2, and everything past the sticks is closed. Rather than just rushing a check down, Pickett actually extends the play, stepping up through the pocket, not tempted by the green grass, keeping his head up to find Johnson, who's worked his way open to extend the drive. And this was a theme of Pickett's tape, both in bravery and his ability to improvise. When the play breaks down, he's got that, that little twinkle, a way to make even the most bullshit of plays somehow pay off. On the final drive of the Raiders game, Kenny pulled off this BS on a pass that absolutely should not have been attempted. 
Everything's even more closed than the Raiders Tampa 2 this time, so Pickett will extend right with the pocket pushing middle. But this is right into the path of Max Crosby, one of the most underrated players in the league. Crosby is going to crunch him, but not before Pickett fires off a wild one crossbody, somehow finding an open fryer move. How do you do that? Let me know. This time, the Browns are in man, but the results? Identical. The abhorrent Steelers line allows immediate pressure through the interior, forcing a Pickett bail and extension. This time, Grant Delpit is in his face, and Pickett will try an even more crossbody ball on the move, whipping this to Deontay Johnson, who definitely takes a football move and fumbles, but the refs are so used to seeing him drop it, they just call it incomplete. Against the arch nemesis Ravens, Pickett auditions for Dancing with the Stars with a pretty little pirouette. Kyle Hamilton is going to come on the slot blitz, and rightfully not trusting his left tackle, Kenny quickly pivots out left, making sure to keep his eyes up again to look for targets. And a more reliable set of hands in Firemouth is found, again throwing against the grain of the scramble, firing it to a hitch up spot and low to protect his man. And lastly, against the Bengals, with maybe his best bit of pocket movement of the entire season. Just inside opponent's territory, teams like to have a shot, so the Bengals drop into a deep Tampa 2. Not that picky will get much of a chance to read it with his right tackle immediately losing. Kenny does a good job to sidestep and avoid, and with active eyes and smooth moves, avoids the second oncoming rusher by correctly stepping up and through the rush, attacking its weak spot right between the rushers. His nifty work has only met him with more pressure though, and it's time for some more escaping left smartly keeping his head up, finding Gunnar Oshevsky for the chunk pickup. And when the defense was tight enough to keep everything locked up through the scramble, Pickett showed the smarts and decisiveness to attack him with his legs. Again, there's going to be interior pressure thanks to a great stunt, but Pickett will create through that chaos. 47 has the right guard on a collision course with Kenny's legs of the stunt, but Pickett's sixth sense has this picked up and immediately scrambles right. It's third down again, so the linebacker hesitates to stay on the running back at the down marker. So number eight calls his own number and dashes for the first. Another long third down and another backbreaking run by the QB. Miami has the pocket folded like origami, but that pocket sense has him working up and through once more. And seeing the Finns defense way back, it's a tuck and run early, sliding after he gets to the first. He's got great runner sense in general, and I think it's a little counterintuitive to what the eye should tell you. Matt Canada's play calling means he's going to try to catch the Jets with the read option on the goal line. And well, nobody was fooled. And yet, Kenny still gets a score. With a defender outside Muth blocking the pylon, and CJ Mosley and Jordan Whitehead coming from the secondary, he slams on the brakes, finding the narrowest of cutback angles, finishing with a double shoulder and the reach for a try. Oh wait, wrong sport. Another play Pickett seems to have mastered early that resembles something close to rugby is the QB sneak. Now you know a player has really got to have stood out for me to include this in a rookie report, but it just kind of seemed ridiculous for how good he was at it, especially considering the interior of his line. I can't make this clear enough. They absolutely sucked. Like they were trash, bruh. Garbage. Garbaggio. The majority of his rushing scores came on QB sneaks, and he time and time again extended these sleep-inducing 17-play drives, where at least Canada backed his boys. Just like how you can do with the sponsor of this week's video, this video is sponsored by DraftKings. With training camp fast approaching, we already have our mind on the upcoming season. And the best way to get in on the action is with DraftKings Best Ball, this year containing a $10 million prize pool. Yeah, you heard that right. $10 million prize pool. Download the DraftKings app and sign up using code THINK. Then enter DraftKings Best Ball and draft your team for the season. Each week, you'll automatically rack up points from all your top scorers. No ads, drops, trades, or I should have played them instead. Head to the DraftKings app and sign up with code THINK and start playing best ball today. Enter the DraftKings $10 million best ball contest and you'll get your first $10 entry back in DK dollars. Only on DraftKings with code THINK. So, there's definitely flashes of some next level play from Pickett. But, as you might have picked up, I'm yet to be convinced that he's truly a franchise quarterback. For the early praise we gave him on progressions, these have been glimpses in an otherwise ocean of lateness and poorly executed reads. Too often did his reads resemble this. Pittsburgh have a rub concept on the far sideline that's going to get Connor Haywood open. 
but despite staring right at it, Pickett pats the ball and waits, throwing late and behind, allowing for the easy breakup. And his deep field throwing saw particular lateness in attempts. Safeties are just too damn fast in the NFL. You can't be waiting and signaling where you're going. I have no idea how this wasn't picked off. It's one thing to be late and have the clock strike on time occasionally, giving you that sense that these are just rookie reps. But there's also just way too many poor reads. The Steelers are looking to attack with a fairly common route concept, with the skinny post and crosser coming from the twin side, and a deep crosser from the solo receiver. This is a nightmare to defend, as the safeties are stretched three ways, usually leaving somebody open. And that's exactly what's going to happen here, with the safety shading to Pickens, believing he's a deep threat, and leaving a trailing Tyron Matthew on his own behind Deontay Johnson. But Pickett misses this entirely, locking to Fryermuth and throwing a wobbler into double, near triple coverage. Come on, dude. Target lock is a major problem, and he's often late on it too making for some pretty ugly throws. Here, Gunnar Oshevsky is bracketed between safety and linebacker on the curl, yet Pickett still goes to him, the shortest player on the field in the red zone. Making this worse is he's late into a never open window, yet somehow the ball gets batted and Gunnar makes the catch anyway. This should have gone the other way. Claypool's tape was much better than I was expecting considering the trade, but Pickett really did not like throwing to him and somehow seemed to think number 11 was invisible. This is far from the only time he missed, but it's definitely the most egregious. Streaking right between the levels of the Bills cover three, Pickett never even spots him, driving this straight to his tight end underneath, and that is a huge chunk to miss. Now that was a poor miss against cover three, but this one is even worse. When working out what a defense is giving you post snap, QBs are taught to keep their eyes on the safeties as their shift usually gives away what's being run. Here, Javon Holland will sink down to fill the hook curl zone in the cover three, and Pickett is staring right at him, which should tell him the coverage immediately and that he needs to check this down and play for fourth. But he straight up forces it to number 18, and look, Holland is just way too good for that. Because of his want to extend the play and stay brave through pressure, Pickett ends up throwing a lot of ugly balls that simply should have been thrown away or grounded. This pick in the Raiders game just makes no sense, because nothing from his look to the short side of the field showed that the immediate ball to his slot would be open. But pressure causes silly mistakes, and Kenny throws it straight at a linebacker. Now poor reading is usually the prime cause of failure, but it's not the only problem Pickett is plagued with. Praise was rightfully parted for his peripheral field throws, but when he targets the middle of the field, he's missing windows and landing spots left and right. He struggles most with just straight sailing the ball over his man, like he can't get the rotation of the spiral to get the ball up and down, and instead flicks it over crossers, spots, and all manners of middle field reads. Here, he correctly reads Pickens coming open in between the levels but he's a full three yards behind on the attempt, and it's from a wildly clean pocket, and that's just a real bad miss, man. Again, there's nothing wrong with the read here, correctly identifying that 18 is gonna come wide open, but again, from a clean base, he just sails this. Luckily, Johnson gets a hand to this, or it's a pick. This time against Philadelphia, Kenny is gonna sky a tricky ball you really can't afford to overthrow. The Steelers are running a mesh concept against the Eagles cover three, but they don't exactly play it well, and there's a drag underneath that would have moved the chains. Yet Kenny gets stuck thinking he must go to the middle hook route to attack the cover three, despite it not really being very open. Making it worse, he skies it trying to throw it up and over the linebacker. And this absolutely should have been picked off. His lack of ability to control this touch ball across the middle really limits the offense in chunk play and intermediate depth throws, showing zero regularity with these concepts. He should have Muth open up the seam for the score in a game that was a complete deadlock, but his control is poor and it's too ahead for even the big man to get. And once more, he'll have his tight end coming up the seam, but this time he doesn't step into it, and the wobbler lacks air this time, being deflected by a linebacker, and finally someone brings one of these in. The arm strength to stretch the field is there, but the same issue happens as across the middle. He just really struggles to hit landing spots with any regularity, continuously needing the heroics of George Pickens to bail him out. And my god, let's talk about number 14 for a second. Now, we had high opinions of Pickens coming out of college and made it clear in a college breakdown video over on Patreon. 
threw to some salty coordinators that the only reason he went in the second was character concerns. There was no doubt about his talent. And well, the tape in the NFL is just as dominant and he is primed for a breakout year in 2023. He's got a hitch to the markers here, and with no pressure, Pickett has a chance to throw on the long third down. But the ball is way off on location. So Pickens leaps like a salmon, full outstretch to bring in a wild one with a corner draped all over him. I mean, what? Or how about this back shoulder ball against the Jets? Pickens just has that 99th percentile body control because I'm not sure how you stop your momentum like this. Get up onto your toes and corral a ball in while falling backwards, looking like a damn ballerina. We hinted at this earlier in the video, but much of the difficulty when it comes to evaluating Kenny Pickett has to do with the offense surrounding him. Now, it's not the receivers, but the guys who are supposed to protect him and the man tasked with calling the plays. Steelers blog boys and angry parking lot fans' favorite target, Matt Canada, took a lot of flack over the last few years for his coaching. And a review of the film honestly explains their frustration. Canada just tries to get way too cute with the offense. Here's a great example of design that just has nowhere to go. Starting out in a trip's left shifted look, Pickett will first call for Gunner to come in motion. And as he passes, the ball will be snapped. The Steelers are going to try to run a tight end screen to the same direction to which they've pulled the defense. And then even more confusingly, Najee Harris will block to the same direction, not trying to get in front out as a blocker but just in pass protection? As you can imagine, this causes the spacing to be absolutely horrendous, pulling all the linebackers directly to where the ball is gonna go, consequently ending in a five yard loss. Come on. This play also frustrates me because it was absolutely a case of getting way too cute. And honestly, a play so obvious, Nick Fury could see it from the sword station in space. Pittsburgh successfully ran a draw play two plays earlier. So when they lined up five spread with the fresh set of downs, I immediately said to my screen, oh, well, they can't try that again. It's way too obvious. And yet there it was. And Pickett took a bruising shot. The lack of verticality in the offense was both a product of Canada and the aforementioned Pickett landing spot problems. And it really condensed the Steelers offense and chances. It felt like the offense was playing in a straight jacket all season long, being forced to throw back shoulder balls when targeting deep, lacking a real burner and QB to push back coverages. Without any big playability and Pickett struggling on intermediate throws, the Steelers were regularly forced into long, elongated, comatosing drives, stumbling their way into 16 and 17 play marathons, only to have no plan when entering the red zone. The Steelers threw just 12 touchdowns as a team last year, bottoming the barrel for the NFL in 22. You'd think this is where the Steelers would shine with so much dinking and dunking to progress, but the dinking and dunking was more a war of attrition than anything close to a Sean Payton offense. With such a poor offensive line and nobody to even give Najee a chance through the middle, Canada tried a lot of carries to his wide receivers, sweeping the ball out to the edge to try and at least win in space. But teams quickly scouted this and put ends and backers in advantageous positions to stop it, knowing their muscle could withstand inside. This is another area where they just became way too cute. I admire the out-of-the-box thinking as a coach to try to make this a stable of the offense if you can't get any movement through the interior, but the designs themselves often left wide receivers with shadow blocks and having to make a man miss in space. That's way harder to do in the NFL than you expect especially when teams are literally camping on it. Overall, I'd say Pickett's season was a mismatch of dimes, bravery, disaster, and poor placement, making him a really difficult prospect to get a read on. Now, there'll be people who see the highlights and believe that the improvisation and early glimpses into progressions mean a franchise leader is on the horizon. But for me, it's hard to see Kenny even finishing a season too far above the Dalton line due to the scattergun arm and lateness shown in his eyes. With Matt Canada standing in the way, hope for good coaching is also likely to impact the young dude's career. Although, he has significant leadership above this with the great Mike Tomlin. We do not care. The talent around Pickett has shaped into a really nice unit. The receiving core of George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, and Pat Fryermuth offers three talented targets with a pretty diverse skill set and there has been significant capital invested into fixing the offensive line, adding Broderick Jones to hopefully give a proper blindside protector and snagging Isaac Seomalu in free agency, shoring up that important left side. There's enough evidence that Pickett will likely get another two seasons of starts, 
but he needs to see some significant improvement in his timing and accuracy if he's to be a full-time franchise leader for the Steelers. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, we've been dropping rookie reports all throughout the summer and I have plenty for you to binge on. Stay cool and take care.